come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. All right, calm down. <laughs> well, you're not excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is right. the best part very of my excited. week. The Saturday Night Freak Show. Very true. <laughs> When we sit around and we watch a movie and then we talk about it for your listening pleasure, who are the internet radio superstars you'll be hearing from? Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And we want to, as a public service announcement, let you know that on July the 3rd of 2019, we're going to own on a freak show road. This isn't even a freak show field it's trip. Road trip. It's a road trip. It's a road trip. Field road. It's a freak it's a, show road trip. Freak a, show road trip. It's a freak show event. Mm-hmm. There you go. If you are in the Madison, Wisconsin area, we're going to be at the AMC six on July the third at six thirty p.m. Mm-hmm. Hosting. That's this right. is just Hosting. weird. Like feels, that we're yeah. doing, it, but whatever. <laughs> you, can, you can see us and hear us at the same what? time. Yeah. What? In the flesh. you can put faces to the voices. There you go. I'm actually a cat. (laughs) Where we'll be handing out freak show merchandise. No, we won't. Okay. No, we don't have any. We don't even have any. (laughs) Yeah. Well, what we're doing is uh, the the kind folks at the theaters there, they're doing a summer retrospective on the films of Steven Spielberg. And we are presenting Jaws. We are. Uh, So we hope that uh, if you hear this and you're within the area, that you come out and check that out. Yeah. That's July the 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Come early. Jaws. There's going to be trivia with prizes. There's then, a bar. There's a bar. Hang and then can, hang out after the movie for a little Q&A with us. Can I, can I win the trivia? No. Is that it? We're no? going to be no. doing the trivia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're asking the what questions. I, no. <laughs> That's why Sean wants to ask if he could participate because yeah. he'll have all the can answers. I just sit in a chair and be like, I, I know that one. No. <laughs> if all no right. one else shows up, yes. <laughs> Audience, sure. we're trusting you to hold Sean accountable on this. <laughs> Well, as our regular show, as I'm sure some of you are aware, but, uh, oh, by the way, if you found us on uh, Apple Podcasts or YouTube or uh, CastBox or Google Play or wherever you found us. Kyle's just putting words together now. Yeah. Please. What's a CastBox? I use CastBox. CastBox. It exists. Really? Yes. Uh, like, so it's you, an Android Like app. Rock the where, CastBox? Where do you Because li- Blake uh, <laughs> Rock the <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice. I like it. That was a good one. What do you listen to your podcast? I mean, I, I have an iPhone. I use Stitcher. Yeah, it's all Apple Podcasts. Yeah. 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 Okay. Stitcher. Play, Google Play music or, music or podcast, whatever sucks. A lot of stuff is I know. Nobody listens to us on that. If you listen to it, I'm sorry, but nobody listens to no, it. According to the statistics. N- half the podcasts I listen to aren't even available I on think, it. I so. think, damn. Like, yeah. Apple users actually listen to podcasts, and like, as far as I'm concerned, nobody else does. Okay, I'm going to get slammed for that. But I mean, Stitcher, according to our, you're talking to Stitcher. two people yeah. that Stitcher's have Android yeah. right here, Colin. Stitcher's a bit. I'm saying yeah. statistically based on our audience. But uh, so, anyway, we watch a movie that's chosen around Robin by one of us. Who chose tonight's movie? Holly. Holly, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we stayed at the Motel Hell. Dun, dun, dun. What? From the year. Uh, 1980. Directed by. Uh, Kevin Connor. Who also directed. Uh, he directed. Hallmark movie. <laughs> a no, lot of Hallmark Lots movies. of Hallmark Hall- movies. Yeah. And, but also uh, for Beyond the Grave. and Which um, we did on this show. Yes. So we're, we're edging him toward oh, yes. the Wall right. of Fame. I'm, anyone, picking a, I'm picking a Hallmark movie next if time. Anyone does the land, on- if anyone does the land that time forgot, he's going on the wall. <laughs> oh, and did people that time forgot, too. He did. Didn't he? Yeah. Ah, at, right. Earth, at the Earth's core. Yeah. He right. did all those movies. Okay. So, which, I mean. Nah, he might make it. I was like, that might not be a bad idea. <laughs> he might, make it. might not be a yeah, bad pick. Yeah, because I think, uh, what is it, Peter, Peter Cushing, Cushing is in, right? Or is it Donald Pleasant? Peter, yeah, Peter Cushing's in uh, Land of the Time Forget. I think I've seen that movie. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Or no, no, You've that was at the Earth's core yeah, where they, be yeah, they burrow down that into the That seems like your kind, of, your kind of time. Kevin Connor, British guy, yeah. came over here. This is his first Hollywood movie. Mm-hmm. Um, This movie stars the great rory calhoun yes it's pretty good a legend mm-hmm. all right so rory calhoun this is his fourth time that we've done a movie with him in it so like, is it oh yeah we've done a lot yeah what do we do sean angel that's right oh yeah that's right didn't we determine that the cowboy uh like retired cowboy gunslinger and bubba hotep was based on rory calhoun we may have mentioned that it feels like that was a thing yeah. <laughs> okay. What? What? What else? Sean, you should you should know most of these. Yeah. Here Looking we go. at the wall, <laughs> I'm looking at the wall right now, and you should know. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. No, that's Royal Dano. But that's, see, yeah. but that's the thing. I know more Royal, Royal Dano. Dano yeah. I always get those two because yes. Royal Dano was in Ghoulies too. 
Royal right, Dano was right. in House 2, but <laughs> Rory Calhoun was in... Night of the Lepus. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long don't, time since we watched it. You bring it up constantly. That's me. I haven't I watched it in a while. I keep bringing it up. Night of the right. Lepus. That I, great movie. If you don't know what a Lepus is, look up yeah, Leap Eye. Uh, this is a movie that you have to see, I think, <laughs> if you're a listener of this show. Night of the Lepus. Go check it out. He was also in uh, an episode I would have loved to be here for. Hell comes to Frogtown. Uh, yeah, I would have, I would have liked right. to have been here for that too. Rowdy Rowdy Piper and Frog People. I was really bummed when I found out I couldn't pick that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There was. Uh, I think Colin's the only leftover from that one. You might be alive. Maybe we can pick that one again. I remember it not being all that awesome. Yeah, but that's it's the like thing. really but again, show. But yeah. true. But it could have been the people. group that you're with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've determined that before. That is possible. Rory Calhoun, I got stories. Oh. So this guy, when he was a kid, when he was because thir- I mean we've had him, uh, we've done movies we've with had him. him on the show. That's right, we've had him on the show before. <laughs> Here. So Six we've done movies <laughs> that he's been in, but this movie, he's the lead. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, Rory Calhoun, when he was a when he was thirteen years old, apparently he came from a broken home. His dad used mm. to beat him, according to Wikipedia. Oh. He uh, started boosting cars, boosting. and from there he. Graduated he did grow to up uh, in the early ages. He, yeah, he yeah. This was like the twenties or something like that. I, I'm not. No, I had, yeah, twenties or even the nineteen early nineteen hundreds. I imagine boosting a car in the twenties was literally just like you boost it. That's yeah. why the yeah two wire. The term it, it, I think there were only two wires in the car at that yeah. time. And Hot wiring cars. At uh, wasn't it just a crank? Yeah, you know what? You're right. <laughs> That's you're right. Boosting the car. Yeah, you're just like I got boost it. the he, engine. He's, he's yeah. got a long trench coat and he opens it and he's got five different cranks. He's like, which one goes in this car? <laughs> <laughs> Rides off into the sunset. That would make it a mile and like, it broke. And for all we know, it did. I don't know. Maybe. But he graduated from that to robbing jewelry stores. Oh, damn. But apparently, so he knocked over like a bunch of jewelry stores and apparently at some point drove a stolen car across state lines. This is where the where they draw the line ah. in like 1930-something. You know, I had to be before that, right? Like I said, the early, the 19-teens. Son, this car belongs to the state of Texas. Yeah, so he went to prison for like three years. After he got out, this guy, I was looking up like the stuff that he did. He was like a cowboy. He was a commercial fisherman. He was a miner. He was, I mean, he did, he was a logger. You know, he did all the shit. Where is the movie? Where is the movie about this man? The Life and Times of Rory Calhoun. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. He's like Abe Lincoln. He went to Hollywood in, I think, 1944. (laughs) And uh, as far as I can, I can't remember the movie that he's famous from because it's not an How to genre. Marry a Millionaire. There you go. Yeah. Boom. Uh, Holly knows. Yeah, it's, it was like the one movie that I really knew him from. Is that the movie like, he's it, in with Betty Grable? With Marilyn Monroe, Betty Grable, Lauren McCall. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. apparently yeah. also information that I picked up during while I was researching this, uh, his wife, when she divorced him, filed suit. And said that Betty Grable was one of the mm-hmm. 79 women that he had had affairs with while he was married to her. Yep. And when asked about it, he said, she didn't even name, name half of them. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Rory I Calhoun think... is wow. a rebel rouser. The man is a scoundrel. Dude, <laughs> a scoundrel. He's an legend. actual scoundrel. Wow. <laughs> but he comes off he in all the movies that he's more. in. He's like this <laughs> kindly old guy, you know? I mean, he ages a lot between Night of the Lepus and uh and motel hell i mean and that's only well because night elipus was like 72 something like that yeah in the killer animal attacks genre yeah um but yeah he got like really old which i'm like you know i guess he had diabetes and uh there was another health uh, problem that he had mm-hmm. that eventually uh he looked led real to gaunt and angel yeah. he did he yeah because really that was did. four years after this so yeah i mean that progression of uh yeah, yeah. but i mean he was in like Every Western TV show and like small bit in mo- in every Western movie, like he did everything. Yeah, well, he has yeah. that kind of. He seems like a natural cowboy. Yeah, oh, you know absolutely. What I mean, like natural yeah. movie cowboy. Because I think he was in like Gunsmoke or something. Was it Gunsmoke? It might it might have been that he was like a regular. I don't know. Not I'm my not thing, sure. He had been in a bunch of Hollywood. He was in Western a ton. And stuff yeah, like that. yeah. Um. Also starring in this movie as, uh, so he plays uh, Farmer Vincent. Yes. Of world famous Farmer Vincent's Fritters. Family. Fritters. Or Smoked Meats. Smoked Meats, yeah. Yeah. The Fritters thing, I'm not sure how that became like such a famous point of this movie because it's, it's in the, it's the tagline. I know, and I don't really understand why they say it one time. I think it's but, their little inside joke. 
I guess. That's as far as I can see it. Goes. Yeah. It takes all kinds of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. I mean, I think it's right there. On it the is. Poster. It is. It's on the poster. Yeah. But... but I think it's just a joke between them because, you know, they. Because they, they no, they did say it like to each other and laughed about it. So it's right. like an inside joke. With I think them. it's their thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, he lives ah, in a. Look what we're doing. Well, they have. It's like th- this is a pretty decent enterprise, right? Because yeah. he, not only do they, so they have uh, a, a smoke smoke or like a meat smoking yeah. business. Yes, they raise so hogs. They and, raise yeah. hogs, and they also operate in a motel. Mm-hmm. This is all connected in like little farmer. It's Vincent good land. business. Yeah. Because well, I mean, I it's because it's a small farm, so they can't be really, really producing a lot of inventory, you know. But with the motel, it's, it it makes sense to me. How many cabins you figure they got there? Mm, I don't know, maybe seven. I was just saying, not a lot. But Do we actually see deal. the outside of this motel? I'm trying just to think like of the, the movie's front, geography. Just like the front was like the archways that Sean and I are pretty sure is the same place from the from uh, <laughs> Kingdom from, of the Spiders. It seemed like it. It looks uh, like it. It looks exactly like it. It looks like it. I don't think the uh, cabins exist. I think I read that they filmed those somewhere else. Yep. And I think the, the interiors, I, yeah. the interiors of the rooms. I think the facade is, is that's it. Oh, yeah. uh, we do see, actually I'm thinking in the do later see- half of the movie, there is like a long exterior, uh, like porch way, which yeah, leads to the cabins. Like, I think that could be like the side of the house, the side of the big complex mm-hmm. of the, yeah. the hotel. I don't think there's actual rooms on this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he operates this, uh, uh, this operation with his sister, Ida. Mm-hmm. Yes. Who's played by, Oh, Nancy Parsons? Yeah. Is that her name? Is Nancy her name? Parsons. Yes, Nancy Parsons from you. Porky's fame? I was going to say, yes. did anybody recognize I, yeah, her? I did, okay. Yeah. yeah. She's in all three of the Porky's oh, movies. Yeah. <laughs> what was it Ball Breaker? Ball Breaker? Something like that? With Brenda Do Ball? the Ball Breaker. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. That's it. That just came to us. Wow. <laughs> you said, like, Beulah Ball Breaker. Uh-huh. My, my Porky's memory is not that extensive. That, mine wasn't either, and that just came back to me. Wow. I think I've only seen the first. No. I've only, seen the, I've only seen the first one. I've seen two of them. I'm trying to think who plays the sheriff in that because he also looks familiar he's to me in my in mind. Porky's, yeah, we've seen him in a few things. He's been like in other Bob Clark movies yeah. or something like that. Yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, so they operate this business, but the business is a cover for mm. what they're actually or whatever. This is uh, what they're actually doing. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not really a cover. Not a cover. It's, it's not a cover a, because they're yeah. unrelated businesses. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, he's know, right? pretty much been like it's meat. Yeah. He, doesn't like, say, yeah. he doesn't say There's, beef. He doesn't say pork. He says it's meat. There's yeah. no reason Smoke for meats. them to even have a hotel at all. I know. That's the, what the, I'm saying. It, that's it, what it has no it impact weird. on the movie <laughs> well, whatsoever. Well, that's how they can draw people in. No, they, but they don't. They use the rail, the tire spikes to get people, so <laughs> they, they do. don't even fucking need the hotel. They do that hotel. one couple. Yeah, the, grab the, them, the, 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 crazy, couple. the crazy swinger couple. They yeah. were the only ones. Everyone else was a result of something they put in the road. I'm sure he gets them from many different places. Yeah, I can't. Because what he makes that comment about like how he tries different things to lure him in because it's like an art form to him. Right, he loves so the traps. I think like that's their basis is like bring people to the hotel, but just for funsies, he likes to try different things to trap them too. Yeah, because you know? yeah, they've been doing this for a while. His yeah. secret is, of course, he's using human meat. So this is basically, is this movie... Like it's taking Psycho and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and smashing yes, them together. Basically, that's what this is. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Only is it uh, is it a serious uh, uh, horror movie? No. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. Yeah, it's a comedy. It was not. It was not meant to be a comedy. Really? It, it was meant to be much. It was originally the screenplay was much darker and included a lot more violence and also included bestiality. Really? And yes. That's and, what I would expect from these type of people though. So why cut that out? Um the the director, Kevin Gunner, when they brought him on board, um, he said that he would do the movie only if they made it into a comedy. Because they had a, a lot of trouble finding someone who wanted to direct it. They didn't they had a lot of trouble finding someone that would back it. They didn't believe they didn't really have faith in like like I said, the bestiality part and like the cruelty and the, like the darkness. So he was like, Yeah, I'll do it, but it should be a comedy. And they're like, Well, we don't have faith in BCL. We finally got somebody, so we'll do what he wants. Did Isn't, I read somewhere that Toby Hooper was supposed he to be was, this yeah. at one point? Yeah, and um, Universal was was involved, and Universal was like, no, we're not doing this. And Toby was like, no, I don't think I'm going to do it either. Well, he had a deal with Universal at that point. Yes, I think, And that's exactly. why he ended up with the Fun House. Yes. <clears throat> what is this, did he do another Universal movie? I can't remember. Isn't yeah. it amazing directors have that kind of power? Could you imagine like going to a job interview and being like, 
I'll take your job, but only if I can do yeah. it the way I want to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, uh, you meet yeah. my demands. Like, and what's, and what's could crazy. Could you fucking imagine? Yeah. Right? And what's crazy is that at this point, he was kind of desperate for work. Like Kevin he, Connor? Yeah. He went to his agent and was just like, I need something. He's like, you know what? I, there's some feelers out there and I have something in mind. Just let's see what we can do. And he was, and he, yeah, he needed the work, but they still did what he wanted, which is crazy to me. That's how like little backing they had with this movie. <laughs> Well, this is why it was a United yeah. Artists film. I mean, I don't yeah. know what the budget was, but I can tell you, he was a guy who had done you know a ton of movies, I guess, before this. So it's like it's probably yeah. actually. Wait, I think I also read the so the Jaffies. This is like yeah. a family. There's like Herb Jaffe. There was a bajillion of them. Yeah, Robert, Robert, yeah, Robert Jaffe and a Stephen Jaffe. Stephen yeah. something Jaffe. Like two of them wrote Raffy. the movie. Yeah. One of Robert them produced and the movie. Stephen Charles. Yes. Uh, so it's Steven possible Charles. these are Get away. <laughs> first time producer. I don't know. First time writers, first time producers. So maybe it's a first time company. Yeah. They bring in Kevin Connor. He's the guy who has the experience yeah. and Rory Calhoun, you know, and then so they basically say like, well, if you do this, yeah. then I'll accept. They specifically had Rory Calhoun in mind. I heard they had Harry Dean Stanton in mind. And he turned him down. What? Oh, you're right. You're right. Who am I thinking of? They had, there was someone <laughs> Since else. Since when does he turn things down? That guy's got like, what, 200 credits probably? There was someone else in this that they specifically had in mind. Oh, it was Paul Link who played Bruce. They wanted him to do it. That's right. Oh, Paul Link. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Who yeah. we'll all know from? What, Colin? Chips. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes, because we're all big Chips fans. Yeah. Huge Chips fans. Yep. Michaela watches it every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the uh, reboot movie, that's like my favorite movie. Right? <laughs> that that Dex Shepard, Michael Pena vehicle. She I can't love get it. Enough. Love it. <laughs> Which one played Artie Grossman? Because oh, that I was don't his character. Know. The, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so the idea is that they run this motel and they lure or capture people Mm -hmm. and then uh, plant them Mm -hmm. in the garden out back yes this is kind of ghoulish a little bit yeah very what do they do i appreciate it they debark them this is a nice term i like this they debark them (laughs) so it's called when you do it to dogs yeah yeah because right, it, it yeah. conjures, okay, I don't know what you're talking about. So People to me, that do sounds like you, you can debark a dog and you, you can, can, like, yeah, you can yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. See, again, yeah. I'm thinking when like, when you said debark, yes, oh, that's why oh, when you said debark, I'm like, off of they them. take no, and no, they're, <laughs> they're vocal cords. The vocal cords, <laughs> yeah. they snip them, debark. Uh, Got it. I don't really understand why they plant them in the ground. I didn't either. I kept waiting for an explanation. Is that just like for convenience? It's like where to store them? or that's the special spot. They're gathering nutrients and flavor and something from the ground, I guess. Like, is that it? It's part of their process. There's a whole lot of this where I'm like, yeah, what the? Okay, so there's stuff that I've picked up through, you know, the age of barbecuing. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> Colin, and his, Colin and his smoker. Yes. You don't want to, you know, you don't want. Oh, you God. Don't, you don't want to. Uh, Are we missing anybody? Well, it keeps. <laughs> I know, right? They, Where's he going? <laughs> yeah. They, oh, 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 yeah. You know that uh, brisket. Yeah, Those ribs were falling <laughs> off the bone. Yeah, just like Igor. That, that meat would be rancid. Yeah. <laughs> but they, I get, you're trying to do it so uh, that they don't, uh, like, you know, they can't injure themselves or make the meat all stringy. They can. They, <gasps> it's the there veal and, uh, process. Yeah, that's and that's why the, oh. they have that kind of instead of just oh, like okay, cracking that makes their way more sense. Later, they have this they like really elaborate system of playing colored lights with swirls in front of them to put them in a happy place. So at the moment that struggle. they, yeah, then they tie ropes around their necks and, uh, you know, attach a tractor. Okay. It's so they aren't panicked when they die to taint the So there's uh, no flavor. acid in the, <laughs> in the muscle and the meat yeah. as they're dying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if they're, so you're, you're saying and this is never said. So in you're the movie. saying if they're like restrained in like a room, they can still like. This is why cows are in a stall. Yeah, yeah the that, size well, of that's their like, bodies. Have you seen the the tents that they right. put the baby cows in for veal? Like, right. Yeah. So they can still like move around and ruin the meat, but if they're packed nicely in the ground, it keeps it nice and fresh. They were saying, mm-hmm. like when they do, like what they do with like duck liver. Yeah. Okay. I'm I guessing gotcha. somebody who wrote this movie did some research. On, I, you know, I don't know about that. Animal, I was like, that's a really uh, surprising thing to assume about this. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they were just like, what would be creepy? <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. the Jaffe brothers grew up on a farm. Well, they plant them in the ground and then they, you know, they then they cut their vocal cords. Yes. And then they cover them with a bag. <laughs> There's a burlap sack over all these heads. So when you walk into the secret garden, which is, you know, covered yes. by uh, vines and all that, yeah. you just see a bunch of plants and then a bunch of these moving sacks mm-hmm. in the ground 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is a kind of a creepy image. It's it very is. creepy. Yeah. Moving and shifting and. And they're making a sound that sounds like. Yeah, constantly. Yeah. It's like a really gurgly zombie sound. I'm not sure what they were. The the Farmer Vincent and Ida are playing some type of noise. It's not music. It's like noise yeah. over loudspeakers all the time, mm. which also is not explained. No. So what do we make of that? It's a, a, a calming noise. Is it would, calming? Would you be calm if you were stuck in the ground and you were listening to that fucking nightmarish shit? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's yeah, what they're I mean, going I for. I think that's what they're going for. I don't know. I wouldn't be. I'd be freaking out. I'd yeah. Be that one dude. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if that's is. all you can hear is the guys next to you. You're in the dark. Uh, all you can hear is that noise. It, and it's not a good noise. It's not a good uh, <laughs> sound that they're playing over their eight track player. Mm-mm. No, it sounds like the wailing of people in hell or something yeah. like that. I mean, it's really <laughs> fucking odd. Yeah. It's that noise of that room in Beetlejuice. It's disturbing. Oh, it is. Oh, it's disturbing. Yeah. I don't like it. Well, meat's meat and a man's got to eat. So that means that, uh, you know, I have always attributed that quote to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, too. And it turns out it's from Motel Hell. Yeah. yeah. It seems like something they would yell in that movie. Right? It does. Yeah. No, yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I thought that was Chop Top my whole life. Oh, I could I totally see that. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, so the main plot of this kicks in because they need. No, uh, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. What year was Texas Two? I don't remember. Texas Two was '86. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there okay. was a long there period a of time gap. between Texas One and Texas Two. Okay. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, and then Texas Two kind of embraced the com- comedic aspect of movies like Motel Hell. I was gonna say that, and mm-hmm. that makes yeah. sense that Texas Two probably pulled a lot from this movie. I feel like it did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because in some ways, this movie delivers what you, and the climax, what you wanted from Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, and never is, got. This is better Texas 2 than Texas 2. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> that was actually what I was thinking when we watched Texas 2. I was like, why don't we just watch Motel Hell? <laughs> oh, yeah, because you'd seen yeah. it before. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, and everybody was freaking out last year. It's like, there's a chainsaw fight in Mandy. And it's like, well, if you've seen Motel <laughs> Hell. There's a ch- pretty awesome chainsaw fight in that, yeah. only oh. because one of the the uh, combatants is wearing a giant pig head. Right. Yeah. yeah. To his detriment, well, I man. think, unless he's done this a lot before and he's trained in the art of chainsaw fighting with a pig head on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. He's been doing this for, what, what 30 is years, he said? I mean, I dug it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was fine with it. It was great. And I mean, honestly, I, I don't know this for sure, but. I assume it was just so they could cover his head and use a stunt guy. Right. And That's, we need a look. We need a yeah, look for this movie. Look. We yeah. need a make it, make it yeah. so cool. It made the cover of Fangoria. I think it's in the logo. Isn't it in the O? Of, it was for a period of time or something oh, like it? that. It was, yeah. Oh, it was on like, oh, cover, God, that, it was on like that, cover number nine of Fangoria. Yeah, which is one of the rarest... Um, Issues of that magazine, apparently, it's, because it's of worth that a lot. image. Yeah, because it was it's, not. A it big was seller. it was not a big seller, so it became like one of the least distributed, huh. and so it's worth a lot of money now. It's hard to find. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, it's an that is one of those quote unquote iconic images of horror that even yeah. if you're not familiar with this movie, you have likely seen the guy in the overalls with the giant pig head and a chainsaw. Right. And it's ironic because, like, I mean, I remember hearing I think uh, Ridley Scott when he was talking about like you know he thought Texas Chainsaw was his favorite movie. But he misidentified Leatherface as Pigface. Oh my yeah. god! A lot of people have know, right? actually because I think he I has. Can't a roll my bit eyes a, hard enough. <laughs> he's got a little bit of an upturned nose. He does. You know, uh, he uh, does. Leatherface does, and so and because it's leather and whatever, like he's not the first person that I've heard you know sure. say Pigface instead of Leatherface, and so I'm wondering if that was in the zeitgeist at the time that Motel Hell came around, and so they're like, well, we'll actually give our guy a pig face, yeah. pig head. Yeah, you know? that could be. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Why not? Kind of reminds me of like, well, first of all, you can't say something's your favorite movie and then fuck up something that big. You just can't. Right? Like, it's not your favorite movie then. Well, they but, never call. Well, I was gonna say they never call them Leatherface, but they do in in Texas Chainsaw. Uh-huh. But they, I like, I get they look similar, but there's also a huge time difference between when these two movies were released. There's, there's a lot. If it's your favorite movie, you should know. 
But um, it reminds me of in uh, Christmas Vacation when Clark comes out of the garage with the hockey mask and the chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> that always bothered me because I was like, this isn't from anything. No, like, you're taking two different things. Right? Yeah. But then it's I thought maybe movie. it's to avoid a copyright mm-hmm. issue. I guarantee you that's what it's So <laughs> then I was like, okay, I made my peace with it. Yeah. If that's why that it's exists. It's kind of chainsaw. That's yeah. not crazy. Yeah. Well, we just watched what the blob was at a year, two years ago, and mm-hmm. in the movie, the little movie within a movie, and that it was the same thing. Right? Mm-hmm. It was the guy yeah. with the, or did he have a hedge cutter? Hockey I think he had a hedge cutter. cutter. Yeah. He had a okay, hedge cutter. Fine. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like a certain recent horror movie. Dun dun dun. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, so the main plot. Uh, so unfortunately, listener, if we're creating theater of the mind for you, you don't get a guy running around with a pig face and a chainsaw the entire movie. No. That's just no. the climax. Of yeah. This. But it's an image so indelible that it lives in horror infamy. So yeah. also, I think, is the image of um, Farmer Vincent and Ida kind of on the, the original poster, which I think we have. Yeah, it's that American little guy right Gothic there. version? Yeah. Right, right. That's yeah. what yeah. is inspiring that. I yes. think so, yeah. The farmer and his wife, in this case, the farmer and his sister standing there. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty good image. Um, Are they in a dell? <laughs> God damn it, Sean! <laughs> I hate that I laughed at that. <laughs> I'm just curious, what is Adele? I think Are it's like, dude, you're getting Adele <laughs> somewhere in between uh, trees. I n- no idea. Plant land or the never knew. A Will glade? No, I don't know. Mm. What are we going with here? Oh, I'm ask Google. I'm curious. What Adele. 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 It is. That's D E L L, and not a computer. Uh, a Wisconsin's got them. One of those, a bunch of yeah. dolls. Oh shit! That's right. Yeah, we've it's been like, to We've literally been to Wisconsin right? dolls and oh didn't. I'm like, we've all been there. What is it? The dolls. It's just a. It's a, a so it's a water those, park. I think it's a water park. It's an upside down, really okay. freaky museum. Yeah. <laughs> Google says that the small valley usually among trees. Hey, I was right. Okay. Bam. There you go. The big brain on college. <laughs> so. <laughs> So. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Is that a Pulp Fiction? Is it? Look at the big yeah. brain on Jeff. <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought it was Brett. Brett. Yeah, Brett. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. That's um, all over the place right now. <laughs> I know. Sorry. So the plot sorry, of this movie. Dills. Plot of the movie kicks in yeah. when uh, when Farmer Vincent snares a motorcyclist and his girlfriend. Well, he, yeah. he snares the motorcycle. And his girlfriend is thrown off. I didn't think he snared it. I saw no evidence that showed that he snared it until they said yeah. later that he shot it. Yeah, I didn't actually see that happen. I was watching it, did, for he, it this time. He, I will he, say it did not happen. He was holding a gun, and then at one point, like the motorcycle kind of like swerved a little bit. And yeah. That's really all we got. Yeah. Yeah. Because the idea is that, you know, I mean, he's been laying shit out in the road. So I thought maybe that was what happened. But uh, yeah. apparently, he shoots out the tire. That's some crack shooting mm-hmm. on That's the part of tips. Farmer Vincent. And, uh, but he is smitten or something with the girl that he, they, he doesn't take her back to the guard, the secret guard. No. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of odd knowing where the movie goes. Like, what do you think? Why do you think he rescued her? He had a crush on her. Did he? Yeah. He saw an angel mm-hmm. and it was God save this flower. Terry. <laughs> He's got a very uh, God fearing, huh? even though this cannibal, crazy cannibal killer has. I mean, he's the nicest guy, Farmer Vincent. We he's have very to stress. Nice. Yeah, very, nice. very smiley all the time. Sure. Rarely threatening, uh, ingratiating. Not, not, not on purpose. Anyway. He walks around with a cleaver and blood a lot. But, yeah. <laughs> but, he's a, but he's, he's a, a smiley farmer. guy. You know, people do that. Yeah. He's a pig farmer. That's what um, they do. So he. he all. Did, uh, affecting an accent right now. I can hear it. I heard it out of you. I heard it out of me. He's, he's a pig farmer. I heard it. All slowly getting there. We're working on it. Working toward. Well, I'll be goddamn. Let's go to review. <laughs> well, there is like a kind of, I mean, this is like, the, it's like, well, I was going to say the Smokey Bandit horror movies. That's maybe uh, not true, but it has that kind of, even though I'm sure it's shot in California. Probably. Yes. Right. Yes. It has that kind of southern feel to it, like well, because that's how these, he talks. Yeah. Yeah, but even the soundtrack album, I mean, or the soundtrack album, the soundtrack, <laughs> the score, and the the music 
is all like country. It's very, it's very down home. Yeah. yeah. It feels like you're in the country. They make reference to being the country, but for them, it's yeah. probably just they're outside of a city. Right. But everything feels very um, pastoral and, you it's, know. It's funny that every farm in a movie, uh, we automatically think that's in the South. I'm just yeah. like, we're in Illinois. They have farms up here too, and they you know talk like us. Oh, that's it. That's movies in general do right. that though. Yeah. Like, in the south, like that. Well, even like the, the the reboot of the crazies that takes place in Iowa, and everyone has the thickest southern accents <laughs> in that movie, and they explicitly state several times it is Iowa in that movie, and mm. I'm like, I no. think we all went off Timothy Oliphant for that one. Like, <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that what you're doing, Tim? Like, yeah. <laughs> what I might. He made He's a choice, like, and everyone else followed it. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we're doing. This is where we are. <laughs> yeah. Um. But so Farmer Vincent brings this girl back to the uh, house where mm-hmm. Ida then is kind of begrudgingly having going to have to look after her. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ida is a little different than Vincent. Yeah. I mean, character wise, what do we think of her? Yeah, she's uh, Vincent has is a little more reserved. You know, yes. like it's clear that he's a religious man. And Ida it seems a little more batshit crazy. He seems like he's just he's like, all right, we got work to do, let's do it. And yeah, he's, like, he's the he's a working, yeah, he's, he's blue collar, salt working of the farmer earth guy. farmer. And she's a little yeah. more like a little more free spirit crazy. Yeah, is she the psychopath of the two of the two. Uh, yeah, more inclined I think so. to murder and call it murder. I think so. I think she's. I think she is more aware of what they're doing. Yeah, right. Think, he would call it he, God's work. She'd be yeah. like, "Oh, it's murder, honey." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I know we're killing them. Yeah. Oh, we're not killing them. We're putting them out of their misery. Right. Yeah. He would. He would try and uh, uh, reason with what they're doing, and she'd be like, "Well, all right, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we're cooking them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but they make the best meats. That anyone anywhere yeah. has ever had. This is true. Because they're mixing uh, human meat in with uh, the pork. Meat. Yeah. I have never actually tried this, but this movie human has meat? kind of inspired me. <laughs> and I, maybe on the next batch. So, uh, I'm sorry, Colin, Colin just say he's going to cook I'm, someone. I'm sorry, Colin, that was a confession. That's on the record, Colin. <laughs> uh, uh, you, do you have someone in mind? Not one of them. I think you do. I'm, show, not, I'm not telling you, you where that. the secret garden is. So... Anyway, this creates a... Uh, I'm just going to put it out there. Colin invited me to a barbecue tomorrow. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, we'll be posting our locations uh, from now on on Facebook. Uh, I'm going to have to check in every day. Well, you'll just have to see if Igor shows up to deliver the mail later. So oh, <laughs> this creates a... Her arrival. What's her name? Terry. Terry. Uh, sweet, innocent, cherubic uh, Terry. Yep. Uh just her damsel uh, wanting just to be saved. A little, a little, a little touched. How do you? Why do you say that? Because she's a little spacey. She's a fucking idiot. Like she's, <laughs> she, like she wakes up in this place and just decides to stay for forever. Apparently, yeah. I love the 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 in in, in the twist of like one line of dialogue. I think because she goes from. I mean, you gotta uh, you know empathize with this poor girl mm-hmm. she was just on the back of a motorcycle with her boyfriend yeah. they're riding across country and then that's the last thing she remembers her they boyfriend hit something that was also food. like 40 years older than her right yeah so Don't she like clearly it. has daddy issues yeah this well is did you see the dates on his uh his headstone said he was 23 yeah i was like what 1923 <laughs> Jesus. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, he was like in his... He yeah. was 57 years old. I know. That's what I'm saying. He was the guy with the beard in the ground, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... I mean, he didn't have a lot of hair. That's what I'm saying, right. man. There you go. Yeah. And she's like, what? In her 20s? Mid- mid-20s, yeah, maybe? Yeah, she's in her 20s. Yeah. Yeah. 20s. She's like 23. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so unresolved daddy issues. Uh, yeah. Right? But and she's Grandpa basically, issues, maybe. Goddamn. Uh, maybe. <laughs> there it is. There's the, I heard the goddamn. Goddamn. <laughs> goddamn. Well, goddamn, Terry. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, well, this, uh, she she wakes up in 1923. And she's like, you know, where's where's Bob or whatever the fuck his name is, right? Uh, what is I think they it might have been to, Bob. It might have been well, Bob. Bob's the other guy, too. But they is have to. Bill? I don't know. Maybe. Bill? I don't maybe know. Bill. But, like, she goes from. Dumb, yeah. In order to get to where Michaela said, you know, basically she wants to live in this place all the time. I mean, it really was like a di- a line of dialogue where it was like, what happened to Bill? Well, we had to, you know, bury him. He's dead. We had to bury him out back. And then I think like in the very, in you know, uh, Farmer Vincent's like, but, you know, it's for the best. I mean, he was all, you know, in pieces. You don't want to see that. And it's like the very next moment she's like, oh, okay. I mean, that probably is what was better for me. And uh, now we're going to. 
You're right. You know what's here. best. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, she has a little bit of uh, maybe a, what do you she call that? Is that? May, May, September. Uh, oh, May to December. May, December. May, December. May, December. May, December. Yeah. Going on with Farmer <laughs> Vincent. I mean, I mean, it starts out with just like, it's like the day after they go to the cemetery and he's like, well, there he is. He's buried. And that's all there is to that. Yeah. And they take her back to the hotel. And she's, At first, she's yeah. distraught. She's not happy. At first, their, I mean, has, their relationship. He has a talking to her, yeah. as they say. At first, their relationship is very, like, father-daughter. Father, daughter. Yeah. yeah, and I she's into his brother, the cop. Well, is she? Well, they go the, on that whole date. The cop's into her. I think she's just kind of, like, like Sean said, spacey and clueless. And right. she's, she's like, just like, all right. She's I like, can, drive in movie, you know? go she's out and like, have some yeah. fun, not with him, but, like, next to him. Yeah. Because like, drive-in is a fun thing. Wait, who yeah. is the cop? The cop is, what's his name? Bruce. Yeah, that yep. sounds right. Yeah. Oh, we're really all going to the accent. <laughs> I said, what's his name? <laughs> Holly was like, yeah. Bruce? But Bruce, Bruce is, uh, the, is Vincent's the sh- brother. Yes. Little brother. Okay, so Which, they're all related. by the way, no, because they're like 20 years apart. Yeah, but maybe more. Different, what different goes fathers on in that or family. mothers or something. This that is happened. a riff It's on the them. South, Holly. <laughs> Oh. That's what they do. Yeah, and I'm they, looking at you, the South. <laughs> they this is they a run this town. I won't make fun of it. Sicker. They run this whole town. Apparently, this this sibling group has like a hold on sure. whatever I mean, area. But this, this is, is also like have reminiscent. you not seen the right. new Texas Chainsaw? Massacre this is all reminiscent movie? of that shit. And yeah. I'm just like, at what point well, is he going to reveal you? himself to be part of this whole mm-hmm. meat processing? That's where I part. thought they were going. With That's where I thought they were going to. Yeah. Which new one? The remake? Yeah. Or, I, no, I have not seen that one. Oh, uh, everybody that. that you run into you ultimately ends no. up being part because of the Because I, I that because that was in the thick of the Platinum Dunes bullshit, and I was mm. like, I've had enough. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> that was peak yeah. Platinum Dunes. Yeah. All you're gonna need to do with that movie is watch like the last twenty minutes. The last twenty minutes is a decently constructed uh, suspense thriller. Mm-hmm. Thing. So it should have been a short. Mm-hmm. There's also a movie. Uh, that when I was working at the movie theater, this came out, so I saw it a billion times that I thought was going to be this movie called Vacancy, where oh, yeah. with Luke Wilson and Kate Beckinsale, and the, the thing, I mean, it was in the trailer, so it's not a twist or anything, but literally everyone in like the immediate area is in on the motel scam. Right. So, like, right. They call 911, and 911's in on it. And, right. Isn't that yeah. the thing in these movies? That's a cliche at this point mm-hmm. that you have to avoid, writers, because mm-hmm. we've seen it before. That everyone in the immediate, there has to be some kind of ray of hope. You just have to kill that person right. somehow that we don't see coming, or you don't. There you go. There's a, there but you then go. your movie's yeah. over. But yeah, but we know <laughs> we're on to your game. We know that everybody's going to be connected. Uh, unless I guess you follow the template of Motel Hell, where it's like everybody is connected, but they're not all in on it. Yeah. Right. Which, why not? Yeah. If you have the, like, that cop is a huge, that's huge leverage. Why not take advantage be- of that? Because he's very he's very protective of his secret spices. Who the cop? Vincent. Right. So Vincent and Ida yeah. are the crazy ones, right? Yeah. They're the ones off cooking people, mm-hmm. and Bruce somehow missed that crazy gene because he ran away when he was eleven. You know what it is? It's actually also, explained it's the age to us. Difference. It, it's because Vincent has syphilis of the brain. <laughs> Just the brain? Just the brain, apparently. Okay. I don't think that's real. Yeah. This is told to us by Bruce. But because I think that's why he missed it, because of the age difference between the two. That's why he didn't a, get Maybe they it. had a different mama. Mate, I think that's it. Yeah. They don't look alike. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> um, In movies, that rarely matters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just whoever is good for the part. <laughs> uh, but okay, so so Terry comes into the picture. Uh, she has a thing for ancient old Vincent. Yes. Uh, Bruce has a thing for her. Well, you know what though? I don't think she has a thing for Vincent right off. I don't think so either. I think it's not when he saves her in the pond. He saves her twice as far as but she's, she's not conscious when he saves her the first time. I uh, got you. This time she sees him saving her. That's all it takes. Just save her. What happens to her in the it. pond? Well, uh, Ida tries to drown her. But, why but would why? Ida try to jar- to drown her? She's jealous. She's so is that implying a ancestral relationship then? Well, it's her brother, and yeah. I think they've been together for a long time, and yeah. it's just been the two of them, and his attentions are being divided. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly and it. He do- and she does not like that it. That is exactly Because I don't it. think there's a, she just likes him, not in a sexual way, but it's yeah. just like, hey, we're partners, we're brother and sister, we've been doing this forever. Mm-hmm. And plus they're doing a secret thing. That I think yes. even though, because I think like you were saying earlier, Ida is the one who has her eyes maybe w- wider open 
about the reality of sure. what's going on. I think so. And yeah. knows that if you bring some outside person into this, you risk uh, exposure to the, to the law. Yes. Yeah. You know, where Vincent's kind of like uh, blissfully oblivious of that. Right. Uh, you know, like, yeah, yeah, one day would you like to learn the secrets of my smoking business? Yeah, because in his eyes, God brought her to him. Yeah. By apparently. him shooting out the tire. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, which is, again, not revealed till later because I didn't, I didn't get that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have an issue with her method of trying to drown her. There are tubing in this pond and she takes out like a knife and like her box cutter blade it looks like. Because we've heard that uh, Terry is not a good swimmer from her right. mouth. Right. right. But instead of stabbing Terry's tube, she stabs her own. Yeah, there's a flaw in that well, Why not uh, just stab her? She had her eyes closed. She wasn't even paying attention. You could just bad. boop. Right. And she was wearing a fantastic uh, t-shirt. <laughs> True. It was a real wet t-shirt contest moment. Yeah. I always wonder about things like that. Like, I mean, you're you're naked, but you're not naked. Mm-hmm. Like, women, do you feel clothed when you're no. in a wet t-shirt? No. Okay. No. So you basically okay. feel naked. I was yep. also thinking that the moment when she was in bed and she was clearly naked, but she just had the blankets, yeah. and she's just having conversations with people, I would be so uncomfortable. This is like the last half of the movie. Yeah. Yep. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. Where she's just towel yep. or just hand across like oh yeah just yeah, it, well, it towel makes you wonder, robe blanket just the one i no and there's no, no, people no. in your room yeah no. like, yeah yeah that's an automatic uncomfortability yep yeah i need like, yeah i need layers of clothing even i'm yeah. like yeah well this is interesting stuff to know because i'm always like you know it's like was this just uh you know again I, i'm like what was the proximity of the 80s to the free love era. I really is, wish know. our <laughs> listeners could see that Sean just covered his boobies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, in this scene that we were talking about, where well, she's wearing conservative man. The, you are. the wet t-shirt in an inner tube. <laughs> um, yeah, Ida instead has in hidden in her hair the razor. Mm-hmm. So we figure she's going to razor uh, old Terry's uh, tube. I think what she's doing it's a it's a form of like uh, what do they call it honey pot it's a it's a it's a trap <laughs> yeah right she's gonna I mean even up to the because I mean like the result of this is the same it, re- it ends in the death of a person right right this this methodology but she cuts her own inner tube so she's sinking so when Terry comes over to try and save her she can pretend that because I'm flailing around I'm accidentally drowning you right mm-hmm. and she's gonna drown her so so, so it's, it's too many would, steps too terry, many steps but terry would go down thinking that who cares she it's, wouldn't know see, that. to me to me it's almost like a fail safe like if she screws it up then she won't think that she just tried to kill her right. yeah mm-hmm. yeah well you that's know? what happens she's like it's, hopefully i actually kill you but if not you're not gonna think i tried yeah, yeah, you know yeah, she gets very over that clever yeah pretty easily although she does have a box cutter mm-hmm. she does she's cut that bitch Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Just, and then you could be for sure. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Exactly. If that's what you're trying to do, yeah. just do it. I agree. This is true. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. mm. But whatever. Hey. Well, it doesn't work because Vincent <laughs> likes fucking Superman. Yeah. Comes out of fucking, fucking nowhere. This old man. Fucking Michael Phelps over here. Yeah. yeah. What Swims the hell? out to what is the middle of the lake and rescues her. We didn't know he was coming out there no. because we were so involved in the life or death struggle <laughs> that was yeah. happening. We didn't know you that were Vincent involved was... in the t shirt, Colin. <laughs> Well, it's also, well, you couldn't see it at that point. She's a very perky young woman. Uh, So uh, he saves her, and this is where she falls in love with Vincent and attempts to give herself to Vincent. Yep. Who rejects her advances. They gotta be married first. This is insanity. (laughs) <laughs> we, we have reached insanity at this point. This, this the fact. I mean, we got to like this, this was is, the insane part. Well, we got yeah, to no, like, it was. Yeah, this is weird that she wanted to just. I'm gonna live on this farm now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just hang out. And then we get to a point where she's like, "You want me to marry you?" Mm-hmm. And it's like, what? What? Yeah. We skipped a few steps here. What's going on? I felt like it, this movie at this point took a hard left turn into like. A knockoff John Waters movie. I was like, is this like outtakes from fucking Crybaby or something? What the hell is happening right now? It did not feel like. Because it went, it went I mean, like. She's like, oh. Yeah, you figure you love how much mm-hmm. time has passed here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to guess like two days. <laughs> two yeah. days. I'm saying two days. Uh, judging, yeah. judging by her outfit change, <laughs> three to four days. Yeah. 
Oh, maybe. three to four days. Maybe. Not long. Not very because, long. Because they accumulate several people in their garden over sure, this time. Sure, there's a couple nights in there. Oh, uh, that's yeah. true. They, they take down Ivan and the Terribles, which yep. we didn't mention. Yeah. This is like a little subplot. A traveling <laughs> band where John uh, Ratzenberger <laughs> uh, is, uh, you know, he's from Cheers. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Audience. Right. Yeah. You know who if John you, Ratzenberger uh, is? Yeah. Some, I hope so. Some of them may Cliff, not. But yeah. This is before Cheers. Uh, he's the drummer in Ivan and the Terribles, this band, and uh, Vincent ends up putting them all in the, in the garden. Mm. Um, so yeah, he has captured several and the yes, swingers, the swingers, the swingers. Yep, uh, the swingers. They end up thinking <laughs> that the uh, oh the motel is on like their adult playbook or whatever map of yeah. the yeah. That guy's the most live wire part of this movie. <laughs> that guy is not having, an actor. There is no way he is fun. an actor. <laughs> he's just like, oh yeah. <laughs> he's constantly jerking and moving. Like he's always bobbing around. Oh, yeah. It's well, weird. I mean, you know, maybe that's the life. I don't know. That I think that is the life. Yeah. That's the swinger energy. Him and his so. yeah. his wife, which suddenly, I mean, it is like a tonal, like, what the fuck is happening? Because he's all who <laughs> it takes all kinds of critters. Yep. <laughs> all she's kinds. got the whip. Whoops. She's going she's around the room. <laughs> she's going the whipping. shit out of everything. 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 Yeah. Wonderful. It's fantastic. She's talented. I don't think it's talent. I think she's just swinging around and just destroying things without knowing. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it looked like to right? me. Yeah. Right. It didn't look purposeful. No. No, because no. I sit there thinking like, I mean, you really need to know what you're doing with a goddamn whip so you don't end up, you know, hitting right. yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, she didn't, didn't like hit, herself. She hit herself. She didn't hit herself and she hit every target she was going for. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was I'm not that's convinced those were targets. <laughs> Mistress is master of the whip. Mm-hmm. Apparently. So... Anyway, yeah, then there's the joke yeah. about, like, you know, they're, you know, you're into bondage, and they're tying them up. Oh, they're like, what is this, dog style? He's like, no, hog. <laughs> there's a couple words missing from that whole thing to like land that joke. Yeah. 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 Um, so, anyway, the romance. Uh, this is the main plot of the movie. They right? got to get married, Colin. Yeah, get married. it does become the A plot all of a sudden. Yeah. It becomes until it doesn't. And it just drops off. Mm-hmm. It's real According quick. According to, like... <laughs> What they shot and what they put in this movie. Apparently, there was more to it. But uh, what are you talking why? About? Oh, there were, apparently there was a wedding scene filmed with Wolfman Jack, where he married those two. Oh yeah, Wolfman Jackson. Wolfman movie. Jackson. This movie. Yes, he is. as the reverend, as the most lackadaisical reverend I've ever seen on TV. <laughs> I've nope. never seen a televangelist just been like sitting in the chair going, "Yeah." If you uh, if you look at the number, he's on literally the of your reclined. Screen, like yeah. you can send me money so I can keep this going. So I can preach to you money. fine people. Get to give the word of God is to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ever like you ever fall asleep with the TV on? You wake up in the middle of the night and it's yes. one of those t- and they're screaming. It's one of the yes. television yeah. screaming. Yeah. It's I been a while up. since it's happened, but yes, yes. It, if it was if he was on TV and I woke up, I'd be like, this. I, I might be able to fall back asleep to this. Actually, like I'd be fine with it. But like, yeah, listen, I can guys leave it on. So, right. Yeah, he's like praise the Lord and roll over and go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> praise Jesus. Maybe. He's not even <laughs> standing up. He's like slouching in yes. a chair. He's literally reclining. reclining. He's literally chair. reclining. Right. I can get that. I can get behind that religion. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, and if we all, we're not going to get on our knees today. We're just going <laughs> to lean back. Mm-hmm. You're talking. And we're just going to lean back. And we're going to talk to God. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be with God right now. <laughs> you nailed it. I did. Yeah. He has, a, he has a couple scenes outside of the TV in this movie, but yeah. Wolfman Jack. Oh, yeah, he does. Where he confiscates the hustler. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. From uh, uh, the Bruce. deputy. From this Bruce. Felt, this felt like a very, uh, uh, modernly, this would be a, uh, what's his name? Say what now? Oh, shit. I'd like to help The, you the, out the actor idea. who would be that. Um, would be the Reverend? Yeah. Oh. Um, oh, for it. Uh, skip it. Yeah, Go on. I'll, I'll think of it in a second. Yeah, all of a sudden, Sean's just going to yell out. You know, <laughs> yell some name. Straight, and you're, you're going to go like, what the fuck? Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah so this comes to a head because uh, they got to get married. Bernie Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie Mac's dead. Rest in peace, Bernie no, Mac. Like, yeah. not, not now, but he's played the character. <laughs> that type of character before. This is a random thought, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so Bernie sorry. Bernie Mac. You were, Bernie just, Mac. you were just looking for a way to talk about Bernie Mac. <laughs> <laughs> He's played that character a couple times, though. I think he did it in Booty Call and Friday. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Are you a secret Bernie Mac stan? It I seems like, like Bernie you're... Mac. No, he does great, this character well. I'm not going to lie. I used to watch the Bernie Mac show. Bernie yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. I used to show. watch that show. Yeah. He's really good in Bad Santa. He's like my yeah. favorite part of Bad yeah, Santa. Yeah, he is. Oh, may he rest. God yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah. Sorry God for that, damn DJ. It. But uh, yeah. 
The star of transformation. I, I, I know. I'm, I'm glad to know that we're all Bernie Mac fans. <laughs> yeah. like, that has like, not oh, come shit. up before. He's our local hero. We need to be. Oh, sure. right? 3,000 like next week. <laughs> oh, fuck. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Did, what, didn't he also have that c- code name, the plumber or some shit too, oh, right? Shit. I don't know. That really bad like spy comedy with Lucy Liu. I think oh, it looked oh. terrible. Was he Charlie's Angels? Was he, he was. Bosley? Yep. He was yeah. the second Bosley. The second Bosley second after Bosley. Bill Murray. All yeah. oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, back to this movie. Our time, our time is <laughs> running out. Yeah. So this is the climax, right? So basically, uh, Bruce, uh, feeling jilted. Yeah. Uh, because he, he, t- cause he took a girl to the drive-in, five miles away from the drive-in, <laughs> to watch a movie yeah. through binoculars. And she rejected his sexual assault advances. Yeah, it's, it's odd that they want to make these two the heroes of this movie at the yeah. end. Because I'm just like, I don't like either of them. No. They're both yeah. idiots. <laughs> yes. He's a creep and she's a moron. Yeah, rooting for this is not a good combo. And he yeah. abuses his like career power like yeah. in all aspects of his life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, takes that like everywhere with them. He yeah. never takes a good old boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Terrible people. Yeah. 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 I Heroes. Know, like, there, there are no. I mean, I like Rory Calhoun. Like, I just yeah. like him, his charisma. Yes. Yeah. yes. But then you're sitting there going, like, but he's the villain. Yeah. And but I don't I, like. You know Ida. what? I'm on his side because he made a few good points. It's he did like, make a good. Yeah. We're overpopulated and people need meat. So, yeah. <laughs> so eat them. This so solves Charles problems. Dickens. He I think also sense. made that. He yeah, said you should just eat the babies. Yeah. Well, you got too many babies. Just well, eat them. That's there's fine. there's a meme going around right now that's similar to that that says eating one billionaire would do more for uh, climate change than you know a <laughs> bunch of us getting electric cars or some shit. I'm for. Yeah. Uh, we're all a bunch for, of sick people. Well, we watch. Person. Look at the movies we watch. Yeah. So. Uh, in the, it's not their fault. In the uh, blame the, in the movies, Colin. Really? In the end don't you blame the, the movies, Colin? Oh, it's too late. <laughs> movies the, don't create psychos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just give psychos ideas. <clears throat> That's a uh, scream, ladies and gentlemen. You were already there ahead of us. Um, but yeah, we come so, to the most memorable part of this movie, which is the chainsaw duel. Chainsaw fight. Well, even to yeah. get there, Bruce has to do some investigating of his own. Mm-hmm. And in this investigation, he discovers, much like Psycho, uh, Vincent has been putting all the cars in the pond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he discovers that the tire has been shot out mm-hmm. on the, the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. And so then he's like, he's coming to warn uh, Terry. Terry. Yep. Well, this, of course, leads to the showdown between Vincent and his kid brother. And I have seen this movie before. And I completely forgot about the B plot that's happening during this scene, which is what's going on with Ida. Oh, the all right. The critters have gotten loose. Yeah, like yeah. I look, com, you, you watching see. it tonight was like, oh shit! I to completely <laughs> forgot. Yeah. This. Yeah. So what happens? Well, uh, wh- Bob what, gets is loose. It's Bob. Bob wriggles his way out of the ground. Wriggles. Wait, Bob. Oh, her boyfriend. Her boy. Her yeah. motorcycle uh, boyfriend. Uh, Terry's motorcycle. Yeah. 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 He. Not veterinarian Bob. No. Who also ends up. I don't know if his name's Bob. Bill. We don't it know if his name's Bob. I have no idea. Okay. But he wiggles out of the ground and frees all the other people from the ground, and they come after Ida. Yeah. So yeah. It's very Night of the Living Dead ish. It is. It there's a, there's a very, there's there's a very a, there's specific a light shot. Machine. Yeah. It's like there's a very specific shot. With, yeah. 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 What do they do with her? How is she dealt with for her sins? I mean, they attack she's, her. Yeah. The same punishment she's bestowed upon them. It, it feels, it's like a, they mob her, and that's yeah. kind of all we see of it. No. Wait. Oh, no. They do end yeah. up at the very end. You're right. Yeah. They bury her they bury face her. first. Yeah. yeah. Head first. In the garden. They go up and there's like, there's a sack moving and they pull it off and it's her feet sticking up from yeah. the ground. And then she does a few jerks comically and she's dead. I know. Mm-hmm. It peals of laughter in the audience. At the end. <laughs> uh, the, right. ending of, right uh, <laughs> the ending of, the uh, ending of Farmer Vincent also elicits a chuckle. Because what's his closing line? <laughs> well, I mean, he oh, they, duels yeah. with, you know, because yeah. he's blind with the fucking, this is when the big chainsaw fight happens. Right. Yeah. It's a hell of a he's duel. He's fucking blind. He ends up getting impaled on a goddamn chainsaw. Yeah. This movie's really light on gore. It is. Yeah. yeah. To say light, I would say almost completely absent of gore. Almost. Although right. we do see a uh, pig carcass get cut through. Sure. And in the end, Farmer Vincent ends up like yeah. skewered. And we do see a little blood there. Yeah. yeah. It's, and there's it's just there's a lot of pig parts sitting around. And there's yeah. there are dismembered 
mannequins. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. all right. Put yeah, into the so smoke and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, it's impl- it's it's like implied uh, viscera. Like Every she's sawing and chopping. It took so long to actually see the smoke, like human torsos, or to actually see human right. torsos. Yeah, to like because you thought you would. Because uh, Terry goes looking into the smokehouse and she's peeking through windows and stuff like that. And, we never get a sense that uh, any human parts are in there until yeah. like, the very end scenes. Yeah. You ever seen a movie called Road Games with Jamie Lee Curtis and mm-hmm. Stacey Keach? No. I might have. Oh, this movie might be. Yeah. Well, there's a scene in there that involves carcasses where somebody's looking at carcasses in a freezer and they're supposed to be pig carcasses, but they don't look quite right. Uh, <laughs> and the next time they go to look, see them, they're gone. So it's like, was were they pig carcasses or not? But uh, that's what I, I thought this movie had that scene when Terry sneaks into the smokehouses yeah. looking through the, yeah. but we never see what she gets to see. Right. And so I'm like, well, shit, that scene must have been from a different movie and that's what it, it was, Road Games. But uh, this one eventually does, you know, I guess they, they wait until everybody's doped up on their laughing gas before they actually get to the business of smoking human meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is something, it's, it's a, a private ceremony. It's a very late night type of thing. Here's my question, though. When I was asking earlier about um, uh, Vincent rescuing uh, Terry, because it does seem like, I mean, if you watch him, and now Terry's obviously interested in him, right? But I'm not sure that Vincent is reciprocal with, because he never really, when she comes on to him, you know, he basically refuses her advances and says, you know, we got to be married first. And she assumes, are you asking me to marry you and I'm going to get married? I mean, I suppose he does go to Wolfman Jack, mm-hmm. the preacher, to get, okay, right, to get that taken care of. I don't of. think but he ever expected it. Was the yeah. plan all along? Because it seems like, you know, on the when they're celebrating, they dope her up yeah. and they're going to kill her. Right, because they do knock her out. The reason that Bruce shows up is because, like, I think he's planning to kill you. Interesting. Hmm. You guys watch this movie. Yeah, he, no, it but it does seem like he was planning to kill her. Mm. Yeah. Based on the doping out. Just trying to make what... sense of it. I'm like, mm, <laughs> I know. That I, was there, that though, is, right? Yeah. I'm not yeah, yeah, delusional. Because, that, that because I wasn't, no, because I wasn't sure if he was trying if he was wanting to kill her or if he was wanting to kill like the stock they had in the garden. There's nothing that Terry does that suddenly like, oh my god, she knows too much and we have to kill her. Yeah. It always seems like Ida and Vincent, he, he, but he keeps saving her, Yeah, which is like, why does he keep saving her? If the ultimate goal was, well, eventually that time is going to come when, you know, we're going to knock you out and, uh, you know, chop you up. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure. Cause, Cause they I, end up I never... tying her down. They're going to saw her. I mean, that's the whole thing. They bring her into the, the smokehouse to kill her. And then Bruce shows up and does a chainsaw fight and saves the day. But wait, don't they, doesn't, don't they bring her into the smokehouse? To like see if if she'll be willing to be part of this life before they tie her down, isn't it? When she starts freaking out that they tie her down and try to kill her. I think there's always a possibility. That I thought that the, he was like life. revealing like this is what we're doing and wants her to like be a part of it, and then she freaks out, and I'm that's when remember, they was there a line like you could never be one of us or you I never think, fit in or something like that. Uh, well, I, there's something like that. I think he was like, well, I guess it's not going to be. A yeah, thing. I, feel, I, I feel like he yeah. resigned to the fact that like it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I think like the, he switched gears. Like, well. It's not going to work, so I'm going to kill you now. Mm. I don't think that was initially the the idea. That's right, because after yeah. Bruce explains that you know they're killers, basically, and that's she takes when he the ring off because that's when he explains right. like, no, I, I'm not a bad guy. Like this, and is, she spits at him. Yeah, and it's right. like okay, yes. that's the moment. Now we're killing. She gets her. Right. she gets very <laughs> aggressive in the last uh, twenty minutes of this movie. That's right. She yeah. knows her mind. Well, there you go. No. There well, you I go. mean, well, I, well let's no. not say that about her because she's you know. Yeah. Because, I mean, she probably marries Bruce once he saves her. So. Jesus. <laughs> so I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, Farmer Vincent, it turns out, is dying uh, deathbed. De- dying moments. His life was a lie, Colin. His whole life was a lie. Oh, boy. This Why? Guy, this guy Why? Laugh this, yeah. I used preservatives. <laughs> <laughs> because he'd claimed all this time no chemicals no nothing in my meat I'm sorry I think that's hilarious <laughs> that, uh, it's a good <laughs> closer that was that was funny. one of the best jokes probably that actually landed it in did. the movie that, got a laugh out of that me that was like a, a that was like an hour and 40 minute joke that, f- that really paid off <laughs> that's what he cared about that yeah, was, was fantastic like, it was a lie. 
That's preserved. I know because what he was saying, you guys were all like, "What are you talking about? You, you pretty much lived your yeah, life. Yeah, you lived your truth, my friend. Yeah. You lived according to how you wanted he to didn't. live. He didn't. Turns out it was fooling. He didn't, and that's the <laughs> only way you make that work. <laughs> Bravo to them. I love it. Yeah, that was pretty good. I think that was it. Basically, that was, like once we got yeah, there, they, it was like credits. Then, then they're I mean, like, like should, "Should we burn it down? We should burn it to the ground." Yeah, which they kind of implied that they do. No. There's like a weird explosion. Oh, and then the the, the hotel sign, the sign explodes. Right? The, oh, the, the sign, explodes. the hotel, hotel is not, hell is not called Motel Hell. Yes. No. What it's is called, it? It's the Motel Hello. Motel Hello. There you go. Except yeah. the O doesn't work. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that sounds like that. With on that sound effect, that probably sounds like a good time to <laughs> yeah. uh, segue into our next segment. So, what we're going to do, ladies and germs, we're going to read some of your mail, and we're going to come back, and we're going to go around the table and let you know whether or not we would recommend. Uh, motel hell it's the most entertaining part of the night because uh we're gonna throw this movie on the table and tear into it mm. like rabid animals <laughs> like critters there you go we and it smoke takes it? all kinds to make farmer vincent's fritters we're just gonna keep you on just you fuck that all up uh you know what i'm just looking on the back of the box yeah. here there's a quote it says the, the most elegant hellishness ever filmed says oh, box office maybe. that is lovely that is kind of the most l- elegant hellishness that is a i don't lovely know if this film. movie was that elegant most honestly elegant i don't know if i would agree with that box office, i don't know if i agree with it but that is a lovely statement it is. <laughs> not bad uh okay so to do that we're gonna have to summon our mailman igor bring us the mail Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Are you trying? I don't see him. I don't know what you're talking about, Colin. I think <laughs> oh, I'm a little concerned. Oh, 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 well, I mean, the barbecue is tomorrow. This is when you get out. close-ups of all their faces as the sweat drips down. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Igor. Colin went around the corner and was like, oh, I got this from Igor and I came back. So. And he grabbed the arm that was attached yeah. to it and threw it back yeah. in the room. He was <laughs> like, fine. We heard a little bit of arguing before. <laughs> Well, uh, before we read your mail, and we hope that you will write into us, you can find us on social media and Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you do. Join, join the Freak Show family. We'll yes. read your comments on the air like we're going to do with Michael Whitaker's comment. Our favorite part of the show. He just watched Motel Hell. And he says it has surprisingly little to do with the motel business. So I'm saying, man. Yeah, that's true. true. <laughs> that's true. I was expecting that vacancy. Is, that's very true. <laughs> um, Kristen Pfeiffer writes in and says, meat's meat and a man's got to eat. I adore this film. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good phrase. Uh, Mike Welch writes in and says, hey, you know, I got to think that Grossman from Chips left the highway patrol to become the sheriff in Motel Hell. <laughs> makes sense it's true Artie Grossman uh, he was also the hobgoblin on Halloween oh on chips he would read he came on did like pirate broadcast on the police Wait, paper. I'm uh-huh. sorry okay what anyway, I don't it was an episode are you talking trick about treat. yeah um <laughs> B movie poster vault writes in and says uh motel hell is one I keep meaning to watch thinking it's in my giant unwatched flicks pile yeah. every time I go to watch it I realize once again I've confused it with Blood Diner, which is probably located just down the road. It's got a great poster, though. Hmm. You seen the poster for Blood Diner? No. Think, it's well, like a maybe. diner. It's mostly black neon diner in the back and a hand with a uh, razor. Uh, you know, a knife? A knife. knife. Thank you. Wow. No, I was thinking butcher knife. <laughs> yeah, the special, lost the, the Halloween oh, I've knife. Seen, yes. I've seen this. Yeah. And it's like about a, I yeah, think it's actually. Awesome. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's a great poster. Yeah, that's a good poster. It's it could a great be poster. Motel Hell. Uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen says, I was never a horror fan until I was about 17, and Motel Hell was one of the first films I got suckered into watching because of the cool VHS cover. I felt cheated. Terrible <laughs> film. <laughs> I think he won I, more that, hotel business like as well. That's like a weird place to start. Especially at the age of seventeen, I feel like I think he was. But he I get, showed that. But I get it though. I like I. There's nothing more disappointing than when you see awesome cover art and the movie either has nothing to do with the cover art or just doesn't live up to the cover art expectations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Well, okay. Uh, about uh, last week's movie, we watched Circle of Iron. Remember that? That oh, was yeah. just last week. That, that feels like week. it was. It feels like, like it was like it was forever ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, Johnny New Jersey says I've never seen this, but if it's anything like Kung Fu, the TV series, then David Carradine got this instead of Bruce Lee too. Totally the same. For a good time, please search David Carradine Tai Chi workout video <laughs> and laugh at that. Oh, boy. I can only imagine, man. <laughs> is it as good as the uh, Steven Seagal karate thing from oh. recently? Because that's the best thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to check these out. Yes. Uh, about our previous previous week's movie, Forbidden World, mm-hmm. Muller Moral writes in and says, Forbidden, Forbidden World, a.k.a. Mutant, is one of the best alien ripoffs ever made and also one of the sleaziest alien movies ever. Exclamation. That's exclamation, true. true. Exclamation. He says, I grew up with the movie. Uh, I grew up with that movie because I remember seeing that movie when I was like three years old. Then again, it's seven or eight years old. Some fun childhood, right? <laughs> wow, I can't wow. imagine um, seeing that shit that well. I guess I saw equally as bad stuff that young, so yeah. I can't really, wow. can't really Damn, make a wow. judgment. I think it I was, was 12 a, before I saw it. It movie is a fleshy movie for a, mm-hmm. for a seven and eight year old kid. Uh, but we're glad you turned out okay, yeah, because obviously you listen to Saturday Night Freak Show. Muddy Funster writes in and says, Ah, a friend and I celebrated Alien Day by watching that other sleazy Roger Corman version galaxy of terror which was actually pretty great except well you know that bit he's talking about a scene where a giant uh like slug has sex with a woman uh oh, that's says, great that's unpleasant <laughs> he might yeah. have to dig this one out uh g mcp writes in and says the whole the subgenre of alien <laughs> knockoffs are perhaps as plentiful as star wars and conan copies yeah that's for sure true yeah, yeah. those italians like those, man there's many the italians yeah yeah. Was there a lot of American Conan? Yeah, there was Beastmaster and mm-hmm. like all that. Yeah. Okay. Who did a tour of the Fighting Eagle? We're going to have to watch that. Oh, oh, that, that, that sounds a awesome. Tour. I think there's two of those. A tour of the something blade. Oh, whatever. Yeah. And Death Stalker. Michael Whitaker writes in again. And he says, I finally got around to watching Forbidden World. It's actually a fairly solid concept. I know I've seen worse as far as ripoffs are concerned. I was racking my brain trying to figure out why I recognized Dr. Hauser. He's the, uh, Crazy the older scientist, yeah, who's in charge oh, of the, the experiment. The, okay. And here, it's because he's in one of my favorite Twilight Zone episodes, 4 o'clock, as the FBI agent. Oh, oh awesome. Yeah, I'm nice. to check that out. And uh, so we posted a image on our social media, which you should be subscribing to. We told you where we're at. Uh, Sean Roger. Oh, we posted a picture of June Chadwick, mm-hmm. the actress uh, from... Uh, uh, Forbidden World. Yeah. I can't remember what character. Barb. The Barb. blonde. Barb. Yeah. The Barb. blonde. Who, and, uh, <laughs> who's eating people with her eyes. Yep. And <laughs> seeing that, Sean Roger writes in and says, fine, I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I I know what you posted. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was I scene. remember <laughs> now. Yeah. Given the, the eye. Yes. The bedroom eyes. Mm. To Side Jesse eye. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so now. Uh, we're going to go around the room. We're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. Motel Colin! Hell. Colin, uh, what did you think about tonight's movie? Motel Hell. Um, I'll tell you also a little trivia about Motel Hell. The week that it came out, it was the number one movie in the country. Oh, yes. At the box office. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, because I think some of these things like why, why have you heard the name Motel Hell? Why do you know about because it? Because that's a great name. That's true, I suppose. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a good great title. Once you it like had stake a good title. claim to that, it's a good title. Good title, good poster. Came out apparently on the right weekend yeah. in 1980 at the right time, and uh, and has endured all this time. Is the movie itself that great? Yeah, it's not awesome. I mean, it depends on what you want going into it. It's not a laugh riot, even though it's a um, comedy. I don't know if it is a a satire of horror movies uh, last week i think i was telling sean off mike like yeah it's a, like a satire of slasher movies misremembering the movie of yeah course. it is yeah, a uh, you know. it's 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 a satire of you know i think explicitly texas chainsaw and psycho mm-hmm. yeah yeah um but i know it was i think it was well reviewed also at the time because I, my opinion is always when you try to temper horror 
you know, obviously Texas Chainsaw had already done it. They got there. Even Texas Chainsaw, Toby Hooper thinks that movie is a black comedy. And it does kind of have some moments, you know, you can see is like, look what your brother did to the door and all that other stuff that's like, yeah. you know, kind of in that realm. But I think uh, when critics like um, these type of movies, right, they don't actually like true horror movies. Mm. And so they always seem to give accolades to the movie that it's a horror movie, but not really. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, it's satirizing, mm-hmm. using air quotes, it's satirizing horror movies. It's yeah. aware of itself and it's making fun of it and it's not repulsively gory or overly suspenseful. Nothing really bad is happening yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. You know, and so they he they say like this is a good one. You yeah. know? Uh but that's basically because they're not people like us. <laughs> right. right. And it's you know? it's safer for them to especially it's safer for them to recommend it. Yeah. yeah. Because then it doesn't say something about them if they're recommending a movie that's yeah. got like yeah. crazy gore and stuff yeah. like that. So mm-hmm. they're recommending something safe like, that won't come yeah, back to them. Because like Roger oh. Ebert liked this movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. He was like, oh yeah, this is great. <laughs> Although I'll give Roger Ebert some credit because he gave The Devil's Rejects three stars. And that is a it's movie that Roger Ebert should, should not, not have. Yeah, yeah. that's very like true. He, for a guy who like hates horror movies, <laughs> that is very true. true. Yeah, very no, true. he had a thing against them. I think, well, famously he and Gene Siskel had a, when they were doing their show, at the movies or Siskel and Eber, yeah. whatever it was called in the early eighties when the slasher boom was happening, they basically had an entire show devoted to like how slasher movies or horror movies were basically these, this immoral force in society. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing. I think uh, critics look at horror movies with, you know, as just like this ghetto of immoral stuff. And so they like it when it's leavened with, you know, humor. Um, so how does a true horror fan take it? I guess when you watch not it, it's true. like, well, it's not, it doesn't have the edge of like, you know, it's not dark and suspenseful or it doesn't, it's not scary motel hell, but I really enjoy uh, the chemistry or the charisma maybe uh, of Rory Calhoun and the chemistry he has with the, uh, when Nancy Parsons, that's her name, right? Nancy yep. Parsons yeah. yep. and the other people in the cast, even, you know, the, uh, Terry can't act with the. Uh, I can't remember what her name is. I'm sorry. What's her name? You got Axelrod. Nina it's Axelrod. Like Nina Axelrod. Nina Axelrod. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure what else she did. I'm sure she went on to a fine career of doing Love Boat. And she whatever did. A, the hell she had a that. fine career as a centerfold girl. Oh yeah. Yeah. She, well, she there was there was very two, perky. There were two. Um, <laughs> there were two um, Playboy bunnies in this. The other one was the swinger. Mm-hmm. Okay, I thought All the two right. prostitutes. You remember the prostitutes in this movie? Nope, you're right. It was the the blonde yeah, one. Nancy, it was Nina the blonde Axelrod one. Is actually not. It wasn't in any magazine, but the it was. Yep, the swinger was. It was the swinger and the and the blonde uh, prostitute. Yes, yeah. yes, you're right. Where was the blonde prostitute? They were in, the two girls in the car yeah. that were like bitching and moaning about oh, how much money they. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the they were with that guy. They're like they're like fifteen hundred was a good weekend. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't get that. I didn't catch that. Okay. It was Nobody very subtle. Did. It was very yeah, subtle. Yeah, too <laughs> subtle to even pick it yeah. up. I could have been doing something else. Um, but I enjoyed this movie. I guess I like uh I mean I and it could be because you know I have a history with it and tonight I'm not watching it like for the first time. It's like I've seen this all through my life it feels like. In fact, Sean, there was one magical night where I was at a Do you want to tell me but you want to tell me about this your magical night? Yeah, I was at a uh diner, an all night diner. You were with me. <laughs> I wasn't with you. No, you were there. Is, we, <laughs> ended, just, we ended up at the same table though. The, were we? I think we did oh, end up at the see, same table. I remember table. it wrong cuz I we was were probably separate, extremely we, drunk. I was with a different group of people. And then I ended up at your table, I think. I thought the the whole thing was and this is again, the fuzzy, Nobody else fuzzy knows fuzzy what we're drunk talking memories. about. Yeah. What happened was all night diner. You've been out like drinking somewhere with your buddies. Yeah. You go to the all night diner. Sure. And you go sit down, you're having a hamburger. Yeah. You're trying to eat off the buzz. And there on the screen on the TV is Motel Hell. Yeah. And you're like, what the yes. fuck is Motel Hell doing here? And you were there because you we told me surprised. you had the same, uh, you saw Motel Hell at this diner. I'm like, oh shit. There we were. I'm Bam. Man. I'm pretty sure we were together. Okay. Was this when you were putting together uh, one of the movies? I can't remember. I think it was. All right. So anyway, <laughs> digression aside. Digression. I don't aside. know where I was going with that, but no. the the fact that it's always been there. It's just a fun memory for yeah. you. Yeah. I enjoy this movie. Uh, I recommend it. There you go. And so I'm passing <laughs> the baton. 
Sean, take it away. Uh, I'm going to make it short because apparently I sound like a 12 year old going through puberty right now. Mm-hmm. I've squeaked a lot uh, at the end of this show. Um, Wait, you've got like a, you've got that cold uh, deepening in the voice. Is it? Can yeah. I do it? Can I just deepen it and just go with that? Hi. Oh, now Hello. we're now we're into smooth jazz, Sean. <laughs> a little smooth jazz. <laughs> All right. Um, Motel Hell. Um, horror doesn't always have to be a heavy affair. It can be uh, light and uh, and just kind of just lightly entertaining, and w- mm-hmm. that's what I think this movie is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I was never bored watching it. Um, this is the first time I've watched it at all. Uh, always wanted to see it, and uh, I had a good time with these characters. Again, I think there's a good chemistry. Uh, there's enough of a good chemistry between Ida and former Vincent, mm-hmm. and then enough weirdness with Terry and her journey through this movie. Yes. Yes. Where I was entertained or at least just going like, what the hell's going on? I have to see where this ends up. Mm-hmm. And by that point, we get to a chainsaw fight with a pig head at the end of this and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So uh, I had a good time watching it tonight. I would recommend it. It's a, it's an It feels like an oddity, but it's a good watch. Like mm-hmm. I was entertained. So I would recommend Motel Hell. Michaela. Uh, this is my first time watching this too, and I feel misled. Um, it's not about a motel. Motel doesn't really have anything to do with it. Like I said, I was expecting Vacancy, which like sure. is not really a great movie, but it does have great, terrifying moments and um, some real grounded horror that's really upsetting. There's certain things that happen in that movie that I think about every time I stay in a hotel, and so like I was expecting an '80s version of that, and. Motel is really inconsequential to this movie, and it's it's not about a motel. And it's there are some great things, and there are some interesting things they're trying to do. Um, but then also, it'll focus on the completely wrong thing or things I don't care about. Get the romance the fuck out of this movie. I don't care about it. I it, uh, stuff like that, and it's it's not particularly gory. And it's for for people that are being made into sausage, it's really not that gory of a movie when you think about it. Like what you're imagining when we say that is so much worse than what you're actually going to see in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm I, I don't think I can recommend it just because it's not the movie. It's it's marketing itself as an I. I think if I were to tell someone to watch Motel Hell, they would probably expect the same thing I expected. So on that, I cannot recommend it. Holly. Um, yeah, I I had seen this before. I, I knew what this what this movie was. Um, and I actually I, I think what Colin said and what Sean said just kind of wrapped it up perfectly. I think that what you said that, you know, a, a horror movie doesn't have to be dark. It can it can have a lightness to it. And especially like this movie being product of 1980 i think the weirdness that we get it and like the and 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 the romance stuff like to me like that feels normal in an 80s movie i'm just like yeah that's what we're gonna get so i mean like i know i know what this was going into it so that's part of it i i was not under the impression that it was going to be a a scary like hostile kind of movie or anything like that um but for what it is like i like i like it for what it is i think i think it's it's funny in a weird way and it's enjoyable. It's light, but it's still, it makes, it makes a lightness of a, of dark content. You know, this could have been really dark and I w- I'm curious to see what the original script had in mind. Um, but the way, the way that it went, I think it makes sense. Um, and the fact that it doesn't make sense, it's just a bizarre movie. <laughs> it's just a ridiculous, it's just a ridiculous plot. And, um, but I think it's fun and that's kind of, the point of it is supposed to be fun, and I had fun with it, so I can recommend it. I think you should watch Motel Hell. There it is. All right, so there it is. Actually, uh, the version that we have here, it's on a double feature with Deranged, oh, yeah. which is the Ed Gein story, another cannibal. That one's the darker one. That is the dark <laughs> yeah, one, yeah, that's yes. That's the darker <laughs> one. Um, okay, so next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Michaela. Kelly, what are we watching next week? All right. Summer of Man versus Nature <laughs> movies rolls Ooh. on yet again. And it is, uh, we got our live show coming up. It is going to be the 4th of July. We are going to watch a Jaws knockoff with Orca, the killer Yay. whale. <laughs> All right. Orca, the killer whale goes under the knife. Next week mm-hmm. on the Saturday Night Free Show, we're going to we're gonna bone it. 
Is that what you do? <laughs> that's a mammal. It's not a fish. <laughs> there, there, oh, that's right. Yeah. That's... Well, I, said, I said there was fish, no bestiality in this comment. <laughs> okay. I, will, I will say just up front. Uh, Igor, cut this. <laughs> cut this out. If you are a, an animal sensitive person, the f- first act of this movie is going to be a little rough on you, uh, but just stick awesome. with it. So. Awesome. <laughs> oh, he eats seals, doesn't he? We'll get to it. We'll, uh, God damn it! It's a, wait, God, God damn, damn it! it. The major theatrical. It's a pretty Paramount emotional movie. Picture. I'll say that. Son of a bitch! All right. Well, we're all in for it next week. Orca the Killer Whale next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>